Xterra World Cup touched down in Oak Mountain, USA, it brought with it the biggest chance yet for top contenders to make a serious impact on the series. Back-to-back -back full distance and short track races meant a potential 175 series points were at stake, but these points would be hard earned with over 50 pros ready to give it their all across the two formats. Felix Frissier arrived as the man to beat, having worn the golden jersey through two stops already, but he'd have his work cut out for him with nine of the top 10 highest ranked athletes in the world looking to derail his run of form. Yeah, I win in Taiwan, I'll uh, almost win in uh, race, and uh, yeah, I hope this weekend in uh, Hawk Mountain I can uh, take the win too. Solène Bilwan would have the target on her back in the women's race, coming into stop number three with the perfect score of 200 points from two full distance races. A double win here posing the threat of all but locking down the series after just three stops. Uh, yeah, the start of the season have worked out very well for me. I've won in Taiwan and in Greece and uh, here we are in the third stop of the World Cup and this course is just a lot of flow and I'm looking forward to race very fast on it. But standing in front of the entire field of pro athletes was two days of all-out racing. With those able to manage the pace and recovery across both formats, standing the best chance of climbing the series rankings. In the men's full distance race, it was the French trio of Arthur Serriers and the Ferrissier brothers who entered as the strong favourites. But it was Sullivan Midar and Eric Lagerstrom who had the full support of a home crowd as they looked to break the blue wave on American soil. This year it looks like the French guys showed up in force, but ideally the Europeans will know that the Americans were here at least. But I do feel like I'm ready to race. Canada's Nicholas Harvey who took control of the race in the water, pairing up with Lagerstrom to pull out a slender lead ahead of a dangerous chase pack that included both Arthur Serriers and Felix Ferrissier. Heading into the forest trails of the Oak Mountain State Park, it was on the bike that the games began. By the five kilometre mark, all the big names had found the front, with Lagerstrom still leading, but Felix Ferrissier and Arthur Serriers in close pursuit. Further back, Sullivan Midar had connected with Maxine Chane, whilst Jens Milslof Nielsen worked with Theo Dupra, all finding the front of the race to create the most tightly contested bike segment of the series yet, to set up an absolute war on the run. Felix Rissier immediately dropped the hammer, pushing hard straight out of transition with a determined Sloth Nielsen ready to chase. But unable to close the gap, the Danes still looked on course to outrun Serriers until a slip in the final 2k saw him hit the deck, leaving the two Frenchmen in a battle to the finish. But in the end, it was Felix Frissier proving once again that he is the man to beat, capturing his second Xterra World Cup win of the year. I'm pretty happy about my race in the World Cup. I win, it was exactly what I, what I want to do, so yeah, I'm really happy about it. Arthur Serriers crossed the line less than one minute back with a respectable second place finish, followed by Sloth Nielsen with a bittersweet return to the podium in third. When the women stepped up to the waters of Double Oak Lake, it was Solène Bilwan who donned the golden cap. But ready to bring her unbeaten streak to an end were Elise Patiez, Annette Grabmuller, and the ever-threatening Sandra Meyerhofer. In a dead heat to dry land, Annette Grabmuller and Camille Lacroix immediately took control with Amanda Felder content to stay on the feet of the leading pair. The trio set a blistering pace, exiting the water almost one minute in front of the chase pack, and more than two minutes ahead of Mehofer and Bill Wan, and the trailing Patiers. Onto dry land, Grabmuller and Felder held the lead up to the 5k mark, quickly dispatching Lacroix, who fell into a widely spread out chase group. Yeah. 
All the while, Mayhofer and Bill One had begun doing what they do best, using their skills on the bike to find their way to the front. But disaster struck for the world champ. Puncturing her rear wheel in almost the exact same place as last year, leaving her to ride almost 20 kilometers on a flat tire, whilst also feeling the pressure from Elisa Patiez, who was quickly closing the gap from behind. This was all the invitation Mehrhofer needed to twist the knife, dropping the hammer and ripping apart the technical course to open up a gap of nearly three minutes by the 25 kilometer mark. But with a fairly straightforward trails ahead, the world champ still had a chance of pulling off the impossible. Mehrhofer was first to hit T2, with Elise Patiers having overtaken Bill One to create a 10 second gap as the two French athletes switched to running shoes. However, Mehrhofer was not ready to leave anything to chance, putting everything she had into the final leg of the race, whilst maintaining a comfortable lead on Bill One and Patiers. With a well-earned victory, Mehrhofer grasped her first World Cup win of the series, but it remained to be seen whether she had enough energy left in the tank for the short track race the following day. Bill One crossed the line in second, nearly 2 minutes 30 back from Mehrhofer, but crucially 43 seconds ahead of her World Cup rival, Elise Patiez. With less than 24 hours to recover, the women were back at it again, this time lining up for the first short track race of the series. Ready to make up for her sixth place finish in the full distance, Annette Grabmuller opened the race at full speed. Exiting the water in a close second, Grabmuller immediately went on the attack, opening up a large gap between her and the rest of the field by the end of the first bike lap. But behind the Czech racer, Bill One, Patiez and Bearhofer had linked up working together to shut down the gap. The three continued to get closer to the front as a group until Fortune changed hands and Mehrhofer went down, giving Bill Wan the opportunity to chase Grab Nola solo. With Patiez still pushing hard to stay in contention. Grab Muller made it into transition in the lead, but ultimately could not hold off the running pace of the world champion, as Bill Wan immediately took command of the run and never let up maintaining an uncontested lead until the finish, to take the win and get back onto the top step. I'm very excited to win the first short track of the season as it's a format I really like and that was uh, fast and furious. Returning to the podium, Grab Muller closed out in second, with Patiers ending the weekend with two bronze medals to her name. With a much tighter leaderboard in the men's field, nobody would have the luxury of taking their foot off the gas in the short track race. Nicholas Harvey and Eric Lagerstrom immediately set the pace again, but the two North Americans were quickly absorbed by Federico Spinazzi and Michele Bonaccina, as the Italians looked to put as much space as possible between themselves and the French athletes. Bonacina could not hold the pace, but to the Nazi led until the last lap, where a big push from Theo de Prigg dragged his countrymen, Arthur Serriers and the Ferrissier brothers to the front as they entered T2. Serriers went out hard, immediately distancing himself from the Ferrissiers and in the return to form that we've been expecting all season. Dominating the run, Serriers pulled out a comfortable lead that he held until the finish line. Yeah, I'm happy to take uh, my first win of the season and the first short track of the season, but I'm ready for the next one. Felix Frissier was finally beaten fair and square for the first time this season to finish second, with brother Arthur improving on the previous day's result with a third place finish. After the first of four double feature stops in the series, Felix Frissier extends his lead at the top leaving a lot of work for those still with an eye on the top prize. Jens Emil Sloth Nielsen briefly moved into second, but after the short track results, Arthur Frissier moves back up to occupy second place. But most notably, Arthur Serriers is now within striking distance of a podium finish. 
So Len Bill 1 made a big call to keep pushing after a mechanical, but her efforts have been rewarded with a lead that gives the world champ plenty of breathing room for the races to come. With two bronze medals, Elise Patiers now stands alone in second position, with Grab Muller dropping down to third. Next up, the series heads back to Europe. With the first river swim, some brutal climbing awaits at the Citadel of Namur on June 8th. It's a course where many of the big names have clashed more than once, with no room for an off day as the series enters its second half. Stay tuned for more from the Off-Road Triathlon Elite Series and be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more coverage of the 2024 Exterra World Cup. I feel my